Who doesn't love summer camps? No one can resist the promise of s'mores and swimming in the lakes and hours of exploration in the woods and nature. I want to welcome you to a retreat in the mountains of Mongolia, the magic. I am Tanya D, a holistic shaman, medium, and otherworldly life coach and subtle energetic surgeon. I'm extending an invitation for you to experience the serenity of Mongolia's majestic mountains, lush hills, relaxing in a peaceful atmosphere of a traditional Mongolian temple surrounded by the warmth, the glow of the crackling bonfires. Join us for an unforgettable experience as we explore the ancient culture of Mongolia, wild horses, sand dunes, nomadic ritual, shamans, villages, the origins, exploring the beauty of Mongolia's unique landscape, discovering the power of living in the present moment. Check out the itinerary for this retreat at club.tanyadi.tv forward slash Mongolian retreat. The magic of Mongolia retreat promises a bewitching brew of spine chilling tales of the supernatural everlasting bonds of friendship, gastronomic delights, impromptu serenades, brave adventures, moments that we're gonna leave you forever enlightened. Sign up today, space is limited for only a few heartfelt magical beings and I'll see you on the other side coming August. Inshallah and Ashe, divine wills, blessings to you and for you, 300 plus magical energetic beings. So are we going to hit the 444 this month? Angel numbers are sure did it for the 10 days of remembering. I got her to the 444. So really sharing the excitement with your friends along with other like-minded virtual musers out in the galaxy and the globe. Either way, thanks for manifestation. It's the imaginal realm, the realm of spirit, divine connection to our Sira, our higher self, what we look like on the other side. And actually, I was a guest artist on the 10 Days of Remembering Challenge, sharing insight into the ghost of the darkness, the shadow records, the book of shadows, along with a little bit of the Akashic. But I do believe that we are still um, able to catch the replays for that. So just go ahead and, if you don't mind, right now, hitting that white rabbit. It's the only way that we can really make certain that this algorithm will give you the nutritional quotient that your soul desires. Hopefully, maybe heartfelt, just feeling the stones into our bones. Our inner value quotient, the optimistic venue, the love quotient that hopefully you have for yourself. So while we're waiting for people to hop on, join us live, listen to the replay, tune in in the afternoon or whatever timeline you're on, the way we value ourselves is the way the world values us outside of us so by divine connection we're actually collaborating with our personal inner will of spiritual values today connecting then to the inner will of values within the circuitry of the energetic center the earth star so our intuitive awareness the banking system of spirit if you will is very different at monetizing that system than the one in this 3d world obviously my imaginal realm created the 444 subscribers for the remembering challenge versus for myself. That's how I work, apparently. That's actually a thing. So as you move about your day, receiving signs, sigils, physical downloads, if you will, intuitive giftings, just be aware, consciously aware, even into the imaginal realm aware, and notice by divine design where the universe is actually pointing you or directing you towards to get you in the flow. Our higher self, our Sira, is really checking in, cheering us on to ensure that we are elevating our worth, valuing ourselves to the highest octave, to that seed sound note, where God universe, a singer of the realm today, the oneness actually sees you already, already as a derivative of. So in the divine's eyes, we're actually being divinely guided to manifest through the imaginal realm for ourselves and for others. And with the round table of the beings of light, the energetic beings of different stratospheres, if you will, the other dimensional beings, the singers of the realm, spiritual truths kind of come with this energy. So really being compassionate to ourselves, be self-forgiving, be self-loving too, you know, just loving and who you are already. You know, you may open a door into the imaginal, the book of shadows, where you become enlightened on something that's been holding you back from the most magical gift 
the being that resides within you, just being and being self-worthy. And you have um, possibly, it's an aspect of you that we are yet to experience yet. Maybe it's something that we have never known was available to us and through us. It's the treasures in the ghost in the darkness. The medicine, the prescription, the ritual to perform is the one of being centered and in compassion, compassion to yourself. And often this does cause an energetic hiccup, healing through the realm of the imaginal, the realms of our higher spiritual connection. It brings us to a stronger inner faith that we may have actually skipped over or browsed over as we're looking through the records. So the message is like the little engine that could, which is actually the first book I did when I was doing um, public speaking. I forget the name of the group, but you had to like get up and tell a story about yourself. And I chose the little engine that could, but I chose, I think I can, I think I can, I thought I could, I did um, as a business owner. And that's kind of what my story was. I think I can, I think I can, I thought I could, I did. And I used the little engine that could, but I held the tone of that to be the thinker in the imaginal realm, the thinker that could. And then at the end, you can say, look what I did, look what I created. So with that, my name is Tanya Dean. Welcome to my virtual medicine room. And if you have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do. Tanya D and hit that white button, the rabbit on YouTube. That's where you're tuning in right now. Even my Musing with Tanya D podcast, we've got the season of the witches. But being that we're in the season of Taurus, the earth star, nature empathy, we also got the shaman's portal, the mystical and the magical, along with the crown center activated today, spiritual connected uh, prophetic visioning. The visions come in generally through white, gray, or black. Uh, but before I go any further, once again, I do want to give a shout out to my village, my tribe, <laughs> my 444, excelling, growing, new peeps, entering the community, the show, new subscribers and all. I'd just like to give a validation, a voice of acknowledgement and actualizing that I do see you, new friends and guests. So thanks for arriving. My intention really is to hit that 444 peeps by month's end. So share with your friends, your like-minded groups and whatnot. And of course, a shout out to those of you that have been a part of my journey since the very beginning, navigating this stage of life. It really does take a village, a tribe, a community, and we need more community. Gratitude and blessings as always to you and for you. Thanks for joining in. And if you do tune in later as well, gratitude and blessings as always. And remember, a comment if you do need a message for your day or into the weekend. Sharing is just another way of paying it forward. It's actually a gratitude blessing. And of course, you could also find me on TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and whatnot. Just remember, I am your otherworldly shamanic reflecting assistant. You are your own healer. We all have intuitive gifts and psychic abilities, but sometimes we do need another worldly life coach assistant, myself included, uh, to get us out of our own magical way. So our light shines brighter. The Daily Snippet, what do I muse about here? What's this show all about? Well, I like to bring in the cosmic insights, the elemental realms of the planet. I see them as elementals doing the cosmic dance. I do by design follow the lunar energies, the moon through the seasons and the gates, the circuitry there as a reflector. I do have a circuit online today, which I'll get to pretty much the waves all week. But for the season of Taurus, we do have the Earth Star, our 10th energetic center online. So it's all things nature. Are you a nature empath? If you're not sure, go ahead and take my Change Your Stars quiz. Besides, it's pretty fun uh, to find out your intuitive gift, your psychic ability. And we, again, we all have them. So we're kind of raising the drawbridge, creating sacred space of our own inner internal value system, how we value ourselves and valuing ourselves more than ever possibly before. And this is like divine connection today. Uh, because we know we are worth more, actually. So this is giving us the ability to really stand up. But I also do the four pillars, our elemental foundation, these useful ingredients. I bring in sometimes the subtle energies, the chakras, obviously, the channels, the pathways, the meridians. That's kind of how I see that. Along with our auric fields. And as a reflector, I always ask myself, as I'm cleansing my auric fields with a different tool every day, sometimes it's a feather duster, just saying, um, I'm always asking, is this the right time? Am I with the right people? Is this me or is this them? What am I seeing that nobody else can actually see? Uh, what is the movement? What's the flow that I am creating? What is the solution that I create within that movement? 
So we do have the pituitary gland, our heart's core, the thymus, along with our bones activated, the endocrine system, the wisdom of our bones, the stones, the ancient wisdom of Africa is kind of how I see that. So with our mind off on holiday in a season where things kind of really slow down and we're really hitting the pavement in a way, this is when we start plowing the fields and getting um, aerating done, right? One step at a time, getting the earth ready. But the wheels of the mind are on a slow turn. The art of the language of the mind. So we are we are our own authors. We're choreographing and editing our thoughts and we're erasing ones that aren't in alignment with who we are and what we want to produce and creation with spirit. So what's the story your mind is scribing? That's the one that your heart should be the author of, not your mind. So producing a personal affirmation around your own inner value system, your internal beacon system, your inner star, your inner self-worth in alignment, it's an attitude of grace, streams of grace flowing, being grateful, and admiring ourselves in the mirror, taking a fucking bow. Yeah, I said that out loud. But the door is open to our higher self and intuitive gifting energy, spiritually initiated, the imaginal realm. It's the soul's gateway. You cannot make this shift up. So if you feel in the in-between, spacey, groggy, in a different dimension, it's because you are in the in-between. You are in the imaginal realm, opening that doorway. And our subconscious mind is percolating really similarly. I've said this for a few weeks, I think now, like a pot, a brew of uh, coffee on an outdoor camping fire, getting out in nature. But meditation, meditation is the opening up to assist us in the spiritual practice, which is a tool connecting us to the realm of the sacred. Anything that brings you to a place of holy communion, channeling and alignment. And I think literally, I'm just saying this because I'm pretty sure on the 10 days of remembering, I was probably channeling most of the conversation because I don't remember what I said, but I did end with a fabulous meditation. I will say that. But our spirit, our spirits in the high tides, the waves just bringing us forward, the juice, our spiritual self, third person omnipresent is offering us on the highest of the highest of round tables, a perspective to our own inner worth values. How you value yourself and your inner will is how the outer will world will also value you. So the imaginal realm, it's the value to the highest of the highs. And through visioning and imagination, it's our earth star bringing this Bringing this energy home to Mother Earth, Gaia, gift and purpose, it becomes materialized. It takes forms. So it really is as if the heavens are showering upon us. The realm of nature being a natural empath, a nature empath, where you really actually divinely choreograph and create with the elemental realms. You actually have compassion for a tree getting cut down or a branch or all the things digging into the dirt without actually offering an offer to the spirits of the land and all the beings and things. Those are prescriptions prescribed. Sorry, I'm having a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm on one. Can you tell? And so um, the energy of transporting, even transforming, it's like from one set of spiritual truths and values to a new set of values or worth within ourselves that we may have had hidden under the earth, under the sheets, the ghost in the darkness, the shadows, the book of shadows. So as we are in our own sacred space, holy communion with goddess universe today, hopefully throughout the day, the light's going to shine upon us, giving us direction towards the greatest spiritual story of what is happening within ourselves under the sheets, the shadow records. And by being spiritually self-compassionate as we bring this initiation of spiritual perspective forward through the eyes of divine creator, bringing non-judgmental, leaving the could have, would have, should haves where actually they are, or even percolating them to see them through the eyes of creator, seeing them and removing the weight of the world off your shoulders, the God Atlas kind of comes to mind, just allowing all the insights your higher self to really show you the story, seeing them with the divine's love, the power of love, the oneness of inner peace flowing without any resistance for actually what they are, whatever it is that we're actually being shown, downloaded, downloads, intuitive sight, literally spiritual gifting from or in the in-between of the imaginal along with the divine, the crown. So those are activated. So you want to put this information to the side in a way. Don't open the book all the way. 
and see it as only one insight, one panoramic perspective in the library to the unlimited potentials of what is actually possible in the imaginal. And the more we respect ourselves along with our spirit space, loving ourselves important, right? So the faster we merge ourselves with spirit, the quicker things begin to unfold, unravel with clarity. So we may have not seen before. This is like opening a treasure box, a gift, the element of surprise. So it's a day literally of holy communion where we begin to see where we may have been undervaluing ourselves and our self-worth. And creator does not undervalue us. We, we do that on our own and the people we surround ourselves with. So sometimes we've got to cleanse the field energetically, the auric fields, and the environment of the people that are in our um, stage of life, our play, right? So it's time to open the door and really look at them, seeing them in the eyes of creator, a place of compassion, perspective. Things come to light. So observe what really comes up and journal, if you will. Take notice in the imaginal vision for yourself. I apparently vision for others. So just a few announcements and I'm not sure I can get there because I've got a little light in my way. So hopefully there I am. Okay. I got lucky. Uh, just a few announcements on the highway and it is a tantalizing Thursday, isn't it? Can you taste it in your bones? I do have a new podcast episode out. This is Jim Marshall. This is, this is great. Septemix. I think he created that word hierarchies of human phenomena. That's uh, the podcast that actually got released today. Great little interview there. A different way of seeing the world, right? Um, so I do a new episode every Thursday if you're new to my show, but Jim Marshall, this is his. It's almost a full hour, by the way. He's this week's audio artist in my virtual medicine room if you tune into my weekly show. Just remember to comment again on your favorite audio room artist so I can have them on again. Uh, you can find it again, Musing with Tanya D podcast. You can just Google myself, my name, uh, Tanya D TV podcast, Apple, Spotify, the usual places, apparently. And Sundays, I do do the mystery guest <laughs> by design. Um, I know this is hilarious, right? Uh, mystery guest artist, a four pillars chart in the rising of the origins. It's a private community. If you need assistance for your own elemental foundation, the elemental that actually um, you are energy body needs elementally. There's a whole process for that. And then the rising of the origins is coming again. It's a free five day immersion that I do usually twice a year, sometimes three times, but it starts June 1st, where we're going to immerse ourselves into discovering our soul and our life purpose, bringing in, uh, setting the stage, the elementals, the cosmic highway, the Degara, which I, um, I'm a mentor of a protege. But I'm also editing and creating the handout for this, so it's going to be updated. And I do offer cowrie shell divinations. I was um, trained in the Degara by Elder Maladoma Somme. Um, the universe sent me to him. Everything I do is through vision. I see, I have sight, sight. Um, but I do these plus soul one-on-one -on -one soul support sessions. I love to bring in the cowrie shells. I pull a card generally from the Fae because I love the Fae, the other worldlies, uh, the Contombles, the Keepers of the Wilds, the Wetomes. But uh, cowrie shell divination was actually brought to the West by Elder Melodoma Somme. I literally was blessed with much gratitude to be a part of his container, a part of his uh, medicine, bringing it here to the West and igniting that flame still. So he's actually an African shaman of the Dagara tribe, Dano Burkina Faso. Again, I was blessed to go there at the beginning of the experience before shift hit the fan here. But again, I'm a protege. I'm a student of his medicine. Um, again, since about probably my journey is 2012-ish, 2013, somewhere around there. Not that it even matters. But again, I also am taking a few inspirited people, like-minded medicine people, on an adventure to Mongolia, indigenous journey, six medicine people, shamans of the land. And again, yesterday, in case you weren't able to tune in, I was a guest artist for the 10 days of Remembering Challenge with Juliana Whitlow, the ghost in the darkness. And again, I do believe you can still join in or listen to the replays. And there's some amazing other intuitive artists there, astrology, human design. Um, so yeah, be sure to check that out. Super fun. There's a lot of magic in there. And today I do have a circuit connected. I hope you don't mind me sharing. This is mostly for my own musing, <laughs> pleasure, I should say, uh, my own journaling online here. Uh, but what's fascinating is uh, this is the gate of, uh, what do I want to say? It's the gate of the alpha, 
which is funny. So it's like finding ourselves in places of leadership. It's we're being put on the stage for great reason because we were designed to be a leader. So apparently I need to be a leader on the stage when this gate is connected. Um, so it's just an important moment to remember that the channel of the alpha is all about leadership. It's about service of the people. So listening to our people and sharing our vision for the future with them. So it's like being designed to be recognized naturally, organically, and people outside of you are going to recognize who you are as a leader as well, and actually open the door inviting you to lead. So this is how we naturally experience this energy of the alpha. So we aren't here to force our leadership on others. That's, that's not the way this works. So it's just about opening it, it up. And so for myself, what's funny is it's um, the gate of stepping down to have somebody else lead is what activates for me. So I find that pretty curious. Um, so there's my little insight for today. Uh, comment if you have the circuitry. Again, I'm not a human design artist. I'm a reflector by design. So I love to follow the gates each month and just sharing and going live. Again, it's, it's, it's like a monthly memoir for me. <laughs> That's how I see it. Okay, and then we have on the elemental highway how was yesterday for you like it was so fantastic for me i just want to say um it was amazing but today's very similar and yet different different we have a yin wood rabbit of a day yesterday we had yang wood tiger but today we've got these two rabbits and what do rabbits do produce 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 we actually had the same similar frequency i believe in february so we have lots of this yin wood energy friends all over the place a creative endeavor we're being fed Yin wood is feeding the sun, the yang fire, which then produces the dragon. So we've got flow. So it's a day to really make things happen, being accommodating, reaching a goal. Mine is the 444. Uh, just vines or grass. Remember, yin wood is like the vines or the grass and the, the meadow. And the more you trim or prune it or mow the lawn, the more it grows. But we don't have, again, any metal. So we may grow a little bit out of control. We've got no guidance. We have no structure because that's what metal would do for wood. They're clashing energies, however. Spirit. Spirit really is our day. It's the energy of our day to take all of our ideas, go create a meditation circle for yourself all on your own, and allowing spirit to really show you a different avenue to your own inner will of your own validation of your own self-worth. And metal. Yang metal actually gives fire the gift and the purpose to forge something through the eyes of spirit. And being at the season of the dragon, we're at the end pretty much of the dragon. We're heading into the season of summer and fire. So fire is on the peak. It's the peak of the highest of the yang energy where wood is the rise of the yang energy. So really allowing that to flow and actually allowing the downloads to stream in, the intuitive insights, the giftings from the great spirit. So be compassionate as these ideas are streaming, especially around your own personal self-worth, your personal self-net, your net, your soul credit, uh, the net. <laughs> That's all I can see is the net. So see the greatest spiritual story of all underneath what is being presented for you. And in this case, it's our worth. So we often get in the way of our own flow, our own manifestations, our own creations, producing with these rabbits. And we go out into the world doing things the way others believe we should. So once we go against the grain, it usually ruffles the feathers, right? So just a kind of a muse there, if you don't mind. So we do have, which is exciting for the day, we have a singer on the highway here, uh, the singer of the realm which the one is the one we protect, which is our heart. So this is literally the frequency of this. You cannot make this up. This card actually goes with the energy of today, like igniting it, like adding, adding it, adding to it, or just loving and trusting, trusting and loving. This is the universe literally opening the door to our own percolating value statement. It's our ability to manifest and we know heartfelt, our heart and unity being the oneness, we know we've got the gift, we've got the purpose. The singers of the realm, they sing the underlying song of the universe. So I'm telling you, you might get some sounds, some circuitry from the other world on a totally spiritually, divinely and spirited connected kind of a day. So literally, I would say, know your worth and add more to that cup. Tip yourself. <laughs> That's it. 
tip yourself, tip yourself on that cosmic scribe. So these are the great ones, the ones whose wingspan, the multiverse, the megaverse, and all dimensions and directions, all the things, the gateways, the doorways, the portals. They have a plethora of human given names, whether it's a god, a diva, an angel, whatever it is, a wetame, a contomble, a fae, that's where I would go. Angels too, though, I'm not going to lie. But they really don't care what we call them as long as we do call upon them, we call them in. They assist us on our path and our journey, our direction, our discovery, and they comfort us when we literally fall off our path. So it's very curious, um, but they're always with us. They're compassionate to our energetic hiccups, our trivial pursuits. So just be open to the presence of unity today on this spiritually high self circuitry that's happening for us and just allowing the singer, their energy to ground into our physical world, maybe streaming through us, connecting to the earth star. So gratitude goes a very long way when we accept their song into our own essence, our own being and life, the magic of the universe around us. Just opening up ourselves through prayer or meditation, the conduit between the topsy turrets, right? So even love, unity, having that flow through us, universal streams, unity is union. It's mystical experiences. It's spiritual. It's a spiritual home. Even know we are spiritually home and it comes first and it also comes last. It's in the in-between where we have the illusion of duality, which we all believe in for a very, very, very long time. But this apparent duality is ultimately showing to be an illusion, but it is an illusion through which we have to pass through. It's like a must. We've got to do it where we must learn to grow. Then once again, we return to unity. So it's kind of a transcendent and not transcendent kind of energy. So you may have had very mystical, magical experiences, the imaginal realm, where you have had true union with other beings that are not of this dimension, or even with unity itself, the one who is all, the oneness. You cannot make this up on this day. So these experiences literally effectively change our lives. They show us that, that the saying that we are all one is not just a pious belief, but it's actually a statement. It's an actual fact. So we are not separate. We're even connected to flowers in a field, but we are all one universal. Atoms percolating in space, right? The quantum, we are all connected. Uh, the only way to reach this awareness is really to surrender to the small, the small everyday stuff, to the larger spiritual self, which is actually unity. It's like putting it all over on the cosmic altar that shrine just allowing here you go um to experience full oneness with unity it's very transformative if you've ever done this or maybe you can sense comment so if you can kind of meditate on this image kind of looking into it and just notice that all of the power is actually focused right into the center there's um like the mobius strip the figure eight in there kind of right so these vast energies, you can see them, there's a plethora of them. So it's as if all of the power is looking for a place to really happen, to get magnetized, right? Magnetic. And that's actually exactly what's really happening, what's going on. So unity is the energy of the cosmos, still unmanifest, still without form. So here we could see the dark and the light. We can see the masculine, the feminine, uh, the yin, the yang, the active, the passive, and other polarities all expressed in balanced energy field vibrant magnetic union if you will it's all that is it is one it's the oneness you cannot make this up and that one is the god goddess universe the principle expressed from this all else everything else is derived from positive or negative so this is the source from which we can draw our strength of our very being our very essence of who we are magnetically and being that Unity showed up. Otherworldly, however, it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, but otherworldly, we may have become too focused on the differences, the disagreements that seem to separate us from others, even undervaluing ourselves. So the universe is like opening us up, like, come on, come on. And this may be um, preventing us from really achieving our full potential, even just happiness, our inner peace. We may even feel alienated, unwanted, lonely. So if that's what's happening for you, then we need to refocus, hone in on what we have in common with our community, the village, people around us, far, near, even near and dear. So we may even need to heal our own attitudes, beliefs, you know, those structures that are limiting us, that are contributing to those feelings of feeling separated and just saying, I am connected. So we could, you know, we could 
usefully consider how we might actually find reconciliation with others. Forgiveness may be that key, that vital access point. Um, prejudice, judgmentalness, critical attitudes, that all, that, that just pushes us further into the delusion and the separateness, like feeling like we are separate and into loneliness, sometimes despair, right? So it's a day really to move towards allowing others to be closer to who we are inside and outside, gradually dropping that defensive kind of attitude that holds them away and keeps us alone. So don't wait for others to make that first move. Today's a day where we can move towards reconciliation, connection, clarity, peace, and still reach out to other people, but do so with compassion, forgiveness. Do it selflessly. That might be difficult. It could be very difficult often at first, but it does require maybe some self inner work, some shadow work. <laughs> That's what I'm seeing, the imaginal there, shadow records, possibly with the help of somebody who's skilled um, in the other world, a therapist, a coach, whatever whatever terminology, I don't know, there's so many. Maybe you need a divination, I don't know. But it really is a day to really go into meditation, go into prayer, sit in sacred space, be in holy communion with unity. Maybe that's who you need to have the conversation with, actually. Holy communion with unity, deep within ourselves. It's here where we there's this ability to trust and love, but also that um, I see like the kundalini, red kundalini or gold kundalini. Uh, different frequency energies. One comes from the heavenly universe and one comes from the underworld universe merging in a way, basically. So this really is the day to go to our inner will of our spiritual space, of our higher self spinning, really connecting divinely, elevating our personal self-worth, our personal medicine, knowing we're valued. So we can see the greater spiritual story underneath that ghost in the darkness, the shadow records underneath the sheets where that treasure is. So it's a moment of self-reflection that's offering us self-forgiveness, allowing us to really release and clarify and re reconcile anything and everything that's really that's been holding us back, preventing us from really seeing the value that we really have. So you don't feel like you're wasted airspace. The way we deserve to be valued it's in this moment of really allowing and letting go with no resistance what we cannot change. That's where we set the foundation, the stage for what we really want to manifest, create, produce on a rabbit day moving forward. But the unity is illuminating it for us. It's shining light on us. So really knowing your worth, you may need to bring it all, like I said, to the round table, the heavenly altar in the sky, just bubbling it out into the world. I'd say play big. There's no reason to play small anymore. Go out, be seen. And knowing that we are in a space of authentic gratitude, we are blessed in a variety of ways, even the blessings in the betrayal. Watch that video, Maladoma, Google it, Blessings of Betrayal. That brings us to an illuminated way of being who we are, the star that we are. And we're all unique. We're all gifted. We're connected with the oneness. We're connected to unity. So really allowing spirit to show you the shadow records that it's been holding you from valuing yourself from the inside to the outside. That then creates this ripple effect of self-worth, kind of like when you skip a stone across a lake. So with all of that, I say ashe and blessings. I'm all about affirming the magical being that resides within. Uh, so thank you, ashe. I'll see you on the other side. Um, get your friends on my show if you don't mind. I got to hit the 444. That's my intention. Blessings. This is not a speculation. It's like knowing the difference between a tulip and a rose. Okay, every tulip in the world is unique. And every rose in the world is unique. But if you show me a tulip and a rose, I can say, this one's a tulip and this one's a rose. That's what this book is like. It enables you to see, okay, this guy, his basic purpose is pleasure. And it explains a lot. And that's, of course, 35 axes. So you can have a very thorough understanding. Let's say... You want to understand your husband, okay? I don't even know if you have a husband. But if you do, you could go through this book and you could find him on every scale. And by the time you got to the end of the book, you would have a detailed analysis of who he is, what his strengths are, what his weaknesses are. You'd probably find he's high on some skills and low on other scales.